Hi there, let's talk about how to delete emails fast from Microsoft Outlook. I'm gonna give you four different methods, plus I'm gonna give you a few extra tips. So I'm gonna just jump into the first thing here. Now in my inbox and probably in yours, I have some conversations going back and forth where people are responding to me, I'm responding to them, back and forth, back and forth. This could be over the period of one or two days or maybe weeks. There is a really fast way for me to delete all the redundant messages that I don't need and I'm gonna use the clean up button to do that. So let's go there now. So I'm gonna click on the home ribbon here and then right beside the delete button, there should be a cleanup button on the left side here. So mine isn't, some of yours might say the word cleanup beside it. Mine is just showing the, the envelope with an X. If I click on the little arrow, I have an option of clean up one conversation. So if I'm on a conversation that's gone back and forth a lot, I can just clean up that one. That might be a good thing to test right off the bat. Uh, I've tested this many times, so I don't need to use that one. I'm going to use cleanup folder. And so that's going to get rid of all those back and forth that we don't need and it's going to pick in particular anything that's already been repeated in the last message it will not take away any attachments so if it's somebody re replied with an attachment at some point it will not remove that and it will not remove anything that's been flagged what you need to know is that this information that we are cleaning up will actually go to our deleted items so actually before I click on this button, I want you to have, I want to have you note two things. Uh, so I'm going to point out those things to you. I'm going to go to the bottom here and on the bottom it says how many items I have in my folder right now. I have 76 items in my folder. So take note of that number because it should go down. And let's go to deleted items on the left hand side. I don't have any. I clean out my deleted items all the time. If you have some, then take note of whatever that number might be because that number will go up. So let's go back to the inbox. I'm going to click anywhere in here because I'm not deleting just one conversation, but all the conversations. So I have a number. You can see the little arrows, a number of back and forth at various times. Okay. So let's go use it. Clean up folder is what I'm going to choose. It gives me a warning. I can go into my settings and choose where I want the cleanup to go. So if you don't like the idea of your cleanup messages going to deleted items, you can make a temporary folder for the cleanup messages to look at what it cleaned up. If you feel like you need to, I don't feel like I need to do that. So I'm gonna let it go to deleted and I'm gonna just click on clean up folder. And there you should see that I went from 76 to 64 messages. So I got rid of a good percentage of the email that was in my inbox, right? Let's go to delete items and let's see that there's a number of emails there. And if I sort on the from, you'll see a number of them are from the same person. Okay, so that was idea number one. Now let me go to idea number two. Why not use a rule to clean up messages? If you're always getting an email from a certain company and maybe you've tried to unsubscribe, but unsuccessfully, uh, so you're still getting those emails from that company. You can make a rule that says any emails that I get from this sender, please send them to delete. Okay, so let's do that with uh, one of my emails here. I'm going to do it with, uh, actually I have a lot of emails from vidIQ. So I'm going to just right click on that email. And the fastest way to do a rule here is just if I'm right clicking, choose rules. And I'm going to say I always move messages from this sender. Of course, I, you, there are options you can say, you can move messages based on a subject. In this case, we're just using it based on the sender. And then it wants to know where it should go. So what we're going to do when we're saying where it should go is we want to click on deleted items to tell it where to go. So we're going to have it go to deleted items. And this way, by the way, I mean, we could say delete it permanently. I don't want everyone to see it again. But if you send it to deleted items, at least you have a chance to double check that that folder and verify is everything that I expected to go in there, go in there and I don't want or should I bring anything back out? OK, so I'm going to just choose OK. And it actually ran that rule at the same time. So you should see at the bottom now I've gone down again in my numbers. I'm at 54 now. So yay, deleting more messages. So that was option number two, make a rule based on those uh, senders that you feel like, okay, I don't need to keep this and I can't unsubscribe for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna make a rule that says delete it. Okay, the third option. If you have Microsoft 365 and you're in that version of Outlook, then you have an option on your home ribbon that says assign policy. And so this one, if I click on it, it gives us a little bit more time for the deleting. So some of you may not want to delete something right away. Maybe there's some scenarios where, okay, I kind of want to keep that because 
and then fill in the blank, right? And so, but you don't need to keep it forever. So if you can make a folder um, that is based on that timeline, or if you can, you know, you can certainly choose the retention on one email at a time, but that's going to be kind of uh, cumbersome. So why not make a folder for that? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a folder that's called uh, promotions or promos, and I'm going to have emails go in there so I can look at the promos and then have that information in the folder delete after a month. So that way all those promotional emails are probably actually expired after a week, but we'll give them a little bit more time and say anything in this folder delete after a month. And now I'm deleting more stuff again. Okay. So we're going to do kind of two things here, make a rule to move a particular email to a folder. And then second thing, make a policy on that folder. Okay. So let's do that with the Samsung emails. So I'm going to make a folder for this under my inbox. I'm just going to do a new folder for promo. And then I'm going to go to my Samsung email and just right click on that. And I'm going to say uh, rules and always move messages from that, that company to the inbox and promos and choose OK. And now again, it's making my inbox a lot smaller, but those emails have just moved somewhere else. But hey, I'm down to 38 now. Yay. So now if I go to the promos folder, just to show you those emails are in fact in there. There's some that are two weeks old. Let's see how old they are. And there's some that are older than a month. So uh, and in fact, I have 16 items in there right now. So let's assign a policy to this folder. So I'm on this folder right here. I'm going to go to assign fall policy and I'm going to say one month. I want everything to be deleted that's older than one month. Now I have the policy in place and just to be sure, I'm just going to uh, actually click on, uh, you know, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to right click on this folder, go to properties and policy is a part of the properties of the folder. So I'm just going to go there and it should say the properties of the folder is the folder policy of one month delete. If for some reason that wasn't there, just know that you could uh, choose it at that point and then choose apply. So I'm not going to change mine. Mine was right. It has been applied. I can hit apply again. Not going to make a difference. And I'm sitting here looking at last month and going, hey, how come these are still here? So what I've uh, read is Microsoft says we have to give ourselves a little bit of time for this policy to kick in. So just be patient. You may have to go back and check it later on. It might even be a day later. Uh, I know this feature works, though, because I'm using it on some of my other folders. So just be patient the first time you create it. OK, so that's option number three. So now another option I'm going to go to is uh, going back to the inbox. We're down to 38 again, by the way. And uh, so, so, you know, a little tip here, this email in particular that's, that just came in is actually one of those ones where I've tried to unsubscribe and I don't know. So I don't want to see this one. I don't even want to make a rule for it. It's annoying. So I'm just going to go shift delete. Shift delete will let me permanently delete it. It will not go to my deleted items. Uh, it's just a fast way of getting rid of an email. So just a quick little note for you on that. Now, I'm looking at my inbox probably differently than you are. So I'm just going to change my view so that I'm showing the reading pane, which is kind of the default, right? So I want to figure out why uh, before I go into the last example of getting rid of stuff, I'm noticing that the vidIQ emails that I told to run a rule to get rid of are still showing in here. And if I go to my deleted items, let's just double check something. I do see some vidIQ emails in there, so it is deleting some. But for some reason, there's some still back in my inbox. And the reason for that is because the email address of the ones that are in deleted contact at vidIQ is different than the email address of the ones that are still in my inbox. So when I right clicked and said move messages from vidIQ, it just grabbed whatever email address was on the message I was on and it made a rule about that. What it would probably have been better is if I would have made a rule that said if the word vidIQ is in the in the sender's name or somewhere in the message to delete it. But that's OK. Let's just make the rule another rule to fix these ones that are left in my inbox. So let's go back there and vidIQ. And so I'm just going to right click again, choose rules again, and then always move. And choose the deleted and say OK. And I have 37. So now I have 27. Right. So I lost, uh, I got rid of a number of emails again. So that's perfect. 
Okay, so the last example I want to give you is a grouping method. So you have lots of emails that you want to get rid of, uh, and uh, it's just, you know, rules. Some of these options might work, but some of them might not. So let's just group our emails together so that we can see them faster. And so for doing this, I'm going to make the reading pane a bit smaller so I can see my messages a little bit easier. And I'm going to group on the from um, from column and so I could click on because I can see that column easily I'm going to click on the heading of it to group but just notice that you might have a by from option here uh, well actually it probably says by date you're going to change it um, you can choose from instead if that's better for you okay so I have everything grouped now if you have a long list you might be scrolling for a few days to find stuff so there is an option as well that says expand or collapse and th this is on your view ribbon at the top expand or collapse collapse all groups which would mean you're only seeing the headings of you know who they're from and you also are seeing the number of items so the one I'm going to get rid of is the top stories one so I'm just going to expand it just so you can see expand this group so I have four emails in there and rather than selecting all four of those and if, if it's 44 or four, it doesn't really matter. I can just right click on the heading of that group, which is the group itself for top stories. And I can just hit delete. So when you group things, you can just choose the heading to delete. Not you don't, there's no need for selecting. So I'll expand all these again and I'll change it back to by date. And then I'll make my reading pane smaller again. All right, so there you have it. Four different ways of quickly deleting emails from Outlook. You have the method of the cleanup button. You have rules that you can use. You have a signed policy that you can use. And then you have the method of grouping your emails and just selecting that group name. So I chose the from uh, where I grouped it by who it's from. You can choose it by subject, by when it was sent or by other uh, columns that you might have in your inbox. All right, so give those a try. Thank you. Bye-bye.